Hello and welcome to yet another mapping tutorial for beginners. Today I'll be running you through the very very basics of uh, how to start up a Gary's Mod map. I'll be showing you where to find the program and how to load it up and so on like that. Alright, now first of all when you load up Steam uh, you'll have to expand by clicking on the arrow click on tools when it's finished loading up all the advertisements and you should have something called source SDK um, you may not have it up where I am because you may not already have it installed you may have it down the bottom here where the text will be blanked out such as source dedicated server alright once you're finished downloading that, um, it'll appear at the top, and then once it's finished, you can double click on it. Sometimes it usually takes a while to load up. It's one of the things about the source SDK is as magnificent as it is there's always something faulty where they may take a while or they might take a long time ah oh, here we go so it's best to minimize uh, steam and then run it just like this Just a um, just brief note while this is chugging away. Um, you may not get Source SDK if you do not have any of the games which um, it, it is supplied for, uh, such as most of the games that it'll come with will be Half Life 2, Half Life 2 Deathmatch, uh, Counter Strike Source. Team Fortress 2, Portal, The Orange Box, um, possibly Gary's Mod, I'm not 100% sure on that, don't hold me to it, um, and there are plenty of other um, games as well, but those are the very basic ones. Um, it will not come with any modifications, you have to buy games off Steam in order to get the Source SDK legally all right so once it's finished loading up what we'll need to do is for okay since we're going to be making a map for Gary's mod um, we'll need to change the engine version to episode 1 and the current game to Half-Life 2 Deathmatch all right since uh, Gary's mod is a multiplayer game will need to use Half-Life 2 Deathmatch but if you want to do it for a single player game um, I'd recommend selecting Half-Life 2 um, and then for other certain games like you know I've got Hidden Source here which I've made a few maps for that's a multiplayer mod and um, the engine version this is for all the orange box games so there's um, Half-Life 2, Episode 2, um, Team Fortress 2, Portal, Day of Defeat Source, and any other uh, mods you have started up uh, or put into the actual database. But at the moment, since uh, Gary's mod is not working on the um, uh, Orange Box engine, as far as I'm concerned, we'll be using the Episode 1 engine and the Half-Life 2 Deathmatch game. Okay, once you've got that all set up, let's go into the hammer editor up the very top here underneath applications. You can just double click on it. Then it will load up our map editor. Now this is what we'll be using to create all of the maps. Uh, basically for any Half-Life game. Now the map editor for the original Half-Lives are quite the same. 
but there are a lot of um, changes in the um, in the newer versions than there were in the previous. Since Valve is no longer working on the original, it is now basically a fan-made engine. Anyways, enough on that. Okay, just start off. We need to go File and New. All right. Now, usually it's meant to bring up four views. I have four views here, but they are not aligned. So what we need to do is go View, Auto Size Four Views, and bang, it's straight into the middle of the screen. This will work exactly the same if you only have one box. If it does not, then I'm guessing Screen Elements. Yep, it should work exactly the same, unless you uh, try one of these center views on selection and such. Okay, to start off, what we need to do is click on the block tool. You can click on that. Now click and drag in one of the 2D views. Okay, now this this is the top view. So I should have explained this before. This is the top view. This is basically looking down a bird's eye view like you do for any typical strategy game. Um, this here is the side. You can, you can view it just by scrolling your mouse over the top left of the view. That's the side and the one to the left of it is the front. The one at the top is the camera. This will be our 3D view which you can view the um, your map in a natural 3D environment. Although it will not have any lighting, but you'll be able to have a very basic idea of what it will look like. Okay, since we have the base here, what we will need to do is let's just drag it below this block here. It's best to keep your floor underneath this green line. It's just something that I do, it's not required, but it helps align your textures by default. Okay. First, let's click on Browse, just over here, so we can change the texture. Click on Browse. Now, I'm going to go and find a grassy texture. So I'm going to type in Grass, just in Filter. And here we go. It's filtered out all the textures, leaving us with all the textures that are named Grass, or have Grass in their name. So I'm going to go with Blender Grass 001A. Double click on that and press enter. Or you can right click on it and go create object. Okay. Let's take a look in the 3D view. Click on the camera tool, left click in the camera tool, and you'll notice that it will not move around because we have not created a camera. So in the 2D view, left click and drag towards your box. Now it's created a camera for us to use. In the 3D view, you can use your left mouse to look up and left and look around on the spot basically. So we can look all the way around. Right click will move you up and down and side to side. Hold both of them down and you can move forward and backwards. So basically, that's how you can get around. And then you can use the mouse 3 to scroll forward and scroll back. Okay, so that's basically showing us our grass or our floor. You can deselect by clicking the select tool and clicking on the blank area in the in the grid. Okay, awesome. So there we go, that's created our grass, that's fantastic. Let's Let's stretch this a bit so it gives people